Now, what are the Mu'tazila putting forward by this ayah? When they read the ayah, Allah does not love corruption. They understand from that ayah that therefore Allah has not willed the corruption. He has not created it to exist. We have. And we are the creators of our deeds. So because we are the creators and willer of our deeds, when we do righteous and good deeds, Allah is therefore obliged to reward us. And if we do bad deeds, Allah is therefore obliged to punish us. And this is the reality of redemption for the Mu'tazila, redemption and salvation. What they call in fancy English language, soteriology, the study of salvation. What that means is their understanding of redemption and the relationship between Allah and his creation is life is what you make it. Life is what you make it. That's the understanding of the Mu'tazila position on redemption. Life's what you make it. And you find sometimes in the English language this comes out in the way that people will speak this I do the good deeds, therefore Allah, he rewards me because he has to. When I changed, when I fixed myself up, when I did this, you look at the opposite of this for Muslim Orthodox, your Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, who understand that there is a difference between what Allah has willed in that he has created it to exist and between what Allah is pleased with and what one is rewarded with and what Allah finds as blessed and righteous because there are two different things. And then he quotes the ayah and he is not pleased for his slaves kufr. It doesn't say and he did not will for his slaves kufr. It said he is not pleased that his slaves use kufr. He is not pleased for his slaves to have kufr. You contrast that with another ayah in Surah Al-Hujurat, the 49th Surah, where Allah says, He, Allah, has made beloved to you iman and made hated to you unbelief when talking about the believers. All of this comes down to a pivotal point in the difference between the Mu'tazila and Muslim Orthodoxy, which is the position on salvation. Najah, foes, and inqav. These are Arabic words. What is the basis of salvation and how is man redeemed? Mu'tazila position. A man decides because life is what you make it. The cement has not yet dried. You still have a chance. When you listen to movies and you uh, read, when you watch movies or you listen to the radio or read books, you'll find that Mu'tazila current. Life is what you make it. You have to decide what you're going to do. The future isn't set yet. The Mu'tazila is in a position. So when I do something, I decide to change up. So I do the righteous deeds and the good things and save myself from judgment. And when I go in front of Allah, Allah is therefore duty bound to reward me with the paradise. And I go inside with my deeds. And they'll quote a whole bunch of verses out of context, but they'll quote nine or ten verses out of context. Muslim Orthodoxy is understanding. Surah Al-Zumar, the 39th surah, ayat 51 through 53. You cannot make to hear those who are dead in their graves when they turn away. You cannot make to hear the one who is dead, nor make the one who is deaf to hear when they turn their backs and flee. No. The only one that shall hear is those who believe in our signs, and they are Muslims. The understanding of Ibn Abbas there in the ayah about the dead is the graves of their hearts. That means that the unbelievers are dead spiritually. So Allah revives those dead by making them Muslims and making it possible for them to respond to salvation. Because if Allah does not quicken that slave, if he does not put the testimony of faith 
on his tongue and the conviction in his heart, he cannot respond to salvation. And if he cannot respond to salvation, he remains dead. So you don't see at the roadside when someone's been in a car accident, the body has been horrifically mangled beyond recognition. You do not see that corpse or that person get up, go over to the medical bag, grab the paddles, charge the electricity and put them to his chest and press them and say clear. And he revives himself one or two times. Who revives him? The paramedics. Why? Because he's dead. He's dead. He's a corpse. He's dead. From the time of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, the human race died. Look at the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses. He, Allah, is the one who rose, who raised, who sent alive a messenger among them. Among who? The Kafirs that were dead. But among them were those who Allah had willed, had written down from the foundation stone, were going to answer his call. And they answered. Because the only way they could have answered is as Allah said in that ayah in Surah Al-Zumar is if he made it possible for them to believe in his signs. If he did not create them with the possibility to be able to answer, with the ability to answer, they couldn't have answered. So, when the slave comes on the day of resurrection, the testimony of faith on his tongue, the conviction on his heart, you remember the couplet of poetry from the early generations who said, we were saved by the grace and favor of Allah, entered into the paradise with his mercy, and arranged in different levels by deeds. Deeds has nothing to do with redemption. It has nothing to do with salvation. It has nothing to do with the forgiveness of sins. The basis of salvation for Muslim orthodoxy and the difference between them and the cults is between deeds-based salvation and a man-centered religion and a salvation based on the mercy of Allah that is Lord-centered. So Imam al-Jawzi is showing us in this ayah, he is not pleased for his slaves' kufr. Then you read in Surah Al-Zumar, the 39th Surah, those ayat. You're thinking, well, what does this mean? Well, it means the human race is dead spiritually. There's a hadith quoted of the Prophet Sallallahu who said, the first one to die was Iblis. And people, what does this mean? It means because of kufr and disobedience. The first one to commit major kufr and disobedience. The first one to die was Iblis. So that means what? If you commit major kufr or major shirk, you're what? You're spiritually dead. You're spiritually dead. Oh, okay, so he just did that and well, what do we do about that? Well, read the other hadith. Had Allah not willed for his slaves to disobey him, he would not have created shaitan. That means there's a predetermined plan in place. That means there is qada and qadr. That means that Allah has willed things and put things into place. Life is not a craps roll. Life is not, well, it is what you make it. The future is not yet set. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. It is because Allah has put prophecies in place and prophets know all the prophecies they've been given. How do they know them? Is Allah looking at it as it's happening, knowing that it occurs and seeing it and then saying, oh, look, it's turned out just right. Or has he laid it down on a plan, foundationally put it and laid it out, laid out the plan, sent prophets who were alive, revived believers who had been promised the, 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 the principle of salvation from the foundation stone to the earth? Has he done that? Yes, he's done that. End of the 85th surah in the Quran, Surah al buruj No, for a surety, it is a majestic Quran in the preserved tablet. It's laid out. Hadith in the Sahih of Bukhari. Allah has written all of what is to occur from now until the day of resurrection. Even so, the rain and weather that you see was ordained 50,000 years before it rained. It's a hadith in the Sahih Imam Bukhari. Therefore, there is a redemptive plan in place. There's a redemptive plan. Remember, the Prophet Adam alayhi salam is in paradise. Yes? He sees La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah written on the bottom of the throne. This is before the collapse of the human race. It's before the collapse of the human race and the idolatry and all these other things. 
It is before all these other issues. So then if he was the first prophet created and the last one sent, that means that there was a redemptive plan in place that this was going to occur. As you read in the Quran, it mentions the messenger that purifies and does what? Yuhyikum, he gives you life, revives you from the, from the dead of what? Kufr. Kufr. He's alive, you are dead. Allah uses him as the catalyst, revives you, quickens your heart, livens you, you have salvation. Because you couldn't hold yourself in the religion. You couldn't bring yourself to the faith. You couldn't bring yourself to believe because the human race from the time of the Prophet Nuh salam, collapsed and refused to believe. So the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, comes into the world as the last declaratory, declaratory statement of Allah before the day of resurrection and this is what happens. So I just want to lay this out very quickly. So the difference between the cults in their understanding of redemption is redemption is man-centered. It comes from what you do. That's why you'll find people in the English language that will say, oh, my iman is feeling low or my iman feels weak. Well, if it was low or weak, you don't have it to begin with. Because who put it in you? Allah did. That weakness that you're feeling is laziness in your deeds, disobedience. Let's get it right. Your iman is not low. There's none of the companions that ever said my iman is low. My man is feeling low. This is something that's come in English. But it's got nothing to do with what the companions have stated. The companions either felt like hypocrites, which, is, which would be people who are guilty of major kufr, who are doing righteous action, but inside they don't believe. They either felt like hypocrites because they weren't working hard enough. They felt like that. Or they felt upright and moving. But no one ever said, oh, my man is feeling low. Which, well, what is man feeling low? Well, it means that you're in charge of it. And that's why your man's feeling low, because when you're left to yourself to be in charge of your faith, to be in charge of fixing yourself up, you're going to fail. So that's not surprising. But when you leave Allah in charge, when you leave Allah in charge, when you let him do all the work, when you let him do all the redemption, the salvation, the clarifying, then when you feel those feelings, you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad that Allah is the one that's in charge of all this. I feel so weak. And you tell Allah these things. Because the good thing he's in charge that he's remained faithful to his prophets. He's remained faithful to the books he sent. He's remained faithful to the people that believe in him. Because have they been faithful to him? Well, no. But that's got nothing to do with the issue. Because he's the one that's given the salvation. So it's very important. This is why the imams brought it up. Because this issue of redemption, redemption, ordainment, destiny, and the basis of salvation will come up again and again. If you read through the Quran, one thing you're going to get through your skull that will be pulverized into the gray gelatin inside of your head is Allah's got a plan set up. Allah has a plan set up. Surah al-Shura, had it not been for a plan predetermined, we would have vanquished them as they spoke the words they said. Well, that's telling you there's a plan in place. Otherwise, well, they'd be burnt to a crispy crunch. So obviously there's a plan. Imam al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says, quote, and the exalted one has said further in this regard, he has mentioned the ayah. And when it is said to him, fear Allah, the person is prompted by arrogance and exaltation and continues in sin. His home will be the great fire. And what an evil home that is. When the exalted one says to be prompted by arrogance, Ibn Abbas says it means to have love and zealotry for what he has adopted. Love and zealotry for committing sin, longing for it, liking it, desiring it. As for the word Jahannam, Imam Ibn Al-Ambadi has said that there are two things that need to be remembered. Firstly, the construction of this name or this word is not Arabic. The word Jahannam is coming from another language. However, secondly, it is an Arabized word. But it is in the feminine. And it is different to other feminine words because it does not have a ta with it. 